Good morning friends, it's Barbara Sue at Kowalski Mountain and today we're going to go on the May Container Garden Tour. So we planted our garden a little more than a month ago and I wanted to show you how far it's come in such a short time and bring you along for a few of my gardening chores. Now I've actually been waiting for my garden tour date to harvest my tomato. I'm so excited. So these three tomato plants are the ones that survived the frost. They looked completely dead and I had hoped that if they had just a little bit of leaf growth that they'd come back. And out of 13 plants I had three come back and I'm so happy with that. So this uh, tomato is ready to harvest. I like them to vine ripen. I like just like that flavor. Um, some people pick them when they're a little less red and let them ripen on the counter, but I do like the vine ripen. Now you'll notice there's a split in my tomato. One of the struggles that we have with the container garden is keeping these tomatoes moist enough. They dry out very fast. It's very hot here in Florida now. And so the consistency of the water is up and down, up and down, even though I water every day. So they have split. That just is a a cosmetic blemish but this tomato will still be delicious. Now I've got several more that are ripening and will be ready soon and we're going on vacation next week so um, Joy my mother-in-law I'm sure she'll take care of these for me and harvest the ones that are ready and they'll be ready for us when we get back. Now while I'm right here I'm gonna go ahead and trim up some of this growth that looks dead. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to support this tomato branch. Um, it's going to get heavy as the tomatoes start to grow. So just using a piece of cording, I'm going to make a loose loop around this uh, branch right here at this little intersection. And that's just loose so the tomato can still grow. And then I'm going to wrap it loosely around the branch as well. And I could go two ways with this. I think I'm gonna come, I think I'm gonna come to this one, just because as this grows, it's gonna bush out more and then I can still get by it. Now this one here, back in the back, is starting to look kind of rough. Um, Philip actually grafted this one. It had a really bad break in the stem. And it's actually doing really well. It's held on, but it is starting to look a little rough. So right here is where Philip grafted it. He wrapped it, he put the pieces together, and he wrapped it with saran wrap, and then it's held together. It's actually held really well. Um, you can see there's still tomatoes growing on it. Um, but it is starting to get a little rough. Now this tomato back here is getting completely wild. I'm going to try to uh, support these branches a little bit. I know you probably can't see that, but there's a little baby tomato right here, as well as some more blossoms. And then there's a little baby tomato here, and all kinds of blossoms on the top. So definitely want to support this branch. I've got several more. I've got a jungle of tomatoes over here. And there's just really three big plants and a couple of small ones, so not many. All right, I have a couple other things I wanna harvest, so let's go look and see what they are. It's kinda of hard to walk through the main center aisle of the container garden because it's such a jungle. Um, these are the cucumbers, 
and um, this one is starting to go across the aisle a little bit. So I'm going to see if I can redirect it. Now I found when I picked it up, which you probably can't see in the view, but I have a cucumber. Now these are just like a pickling cucumber, so I'm going to go ahead and pick this one. Add, I'm going to add that to my pot of harvesting today. And I'm going to redirect this uh, vine up into my trellis. Because in the aisle, I'm stepping. Now it's out of the aisle, so I won't step on it. And I actually have a couple more cucumbers that are ready. And there's one someplace on the back. Oh, there it is. Right up here. All right, so there it is for today's cucumber harvest. Let's see what else we've got. So this is the original green stock, and I planted a lot of green beans in it. This is okra at the top, which I planted because I really like the flowers. And you know what? I haven't seen a single flower on this. I've harvested a couple of okra, which I gave to Joy, my mother-in-law, because I don't even like okra. But I wanted the flowers, and I never saw one. Let's see if we have any green beans right now. So for my green beans, I'm getting enough for fresh eating. This will be the second meal we've had of green beans, and that's fine with me. I'm happy with that. Um, I'm just enjoying keeping the container garden going and sharpening my garden skills. All right, so I want to give you a close-up view of what's in that green stock because I see something that makes me really excited. Let me show you. So here's that original green stock. I see a couple green beans here that I missed that I should probably pick off. right there but this is what I wanted to show you these are dahlias and those are going to bloom while I'm on vacation I'm sure of it those are going to be beautiful I can't wait to see them here's the okra got a couple of okra that are going to be uh, ready to pick very soon and here's another dahlia I planted the flowers for the bees to attract them here to the garden. Um, and then this is a tomato back here. Um, it's a rogue tomato or a volunteer tomato. Um, we have a lot of those because of the little tomato plants that we have. So the green stalk's growing really well. I've been pleased with using it for the green beans. Um, these are actually uh, carrots here and here's some more rogue tomatoes. You can see the tomatoes in there all over the place. Um, but it's looking really good. I've been happy with it. Easy to water, easy to fertilize. Now the container garden for the most part we're just getting enough for fresh eating but I think the one exception to that is going to be potatoes. I'm hoping we have a bumper crop of potatoes. We planted the Kennebec tomatoes which we really like that. We bought some from the Amish last year and the potatoes were so good so we've chosen that variety. And there are, there are three pots of potatoes right there. There are two over there. And then there's many along this entire side here. Um, and then at the very end of the uh, garden, there are more. So I'm hoping we get a really good crop of potatoes. Now we also have some pineapples. These pineapples are, Two or three years old 
We have yet to get a pineapple. Um, we'll see. <clears throat> and there is one hidden down in that jungle as well. There is another one kind of getting buried by potatoes. So one of the things that's growing really well is the lupus squash. Um, I, do, I grew this just for fun. I wanted to see what would happen, but it has grown like crazy. It's climbed up the trellis really well. Um, I keep finding stink bugs on it, and uh, anytime I find them, I squish them. I've also sprayed with um, neem oil, and I also have some peppermint soap that I need to spray. Um, I don't want to do that um, right now. Uh, the neem oil I don't do in the heat of the day. And the peppermint oil probably should do earlier in the day so it can dry. Um, oops, here's some right now. Some of these little stink bugs and they get squished. Look at this squash. This one's really impressive over here. Their flowers are really pretty. Let me show you those too. So here's one that's low. It's easy for me to photograph. And I'm in a spider web here. That's lovely. Here's that large one that's just so impressive. And then there's some flowers up there. A little harder to photograph there above my head. Oh, there's one way up there as well. I can't wait to see how these go. I'm really excited about giving this a try. We got lots of grapes coming on here. This is the first time we've had grapes. These plants are about three years old, so it's really exciting to see the grapes starting to produce. So I'm just gonna hand hold the camera because it's really hard to get this tripod down through the center aisle. So this is the main center aisle. We have the grapes here on the right, and then there's potatoes, most of that row. Um, the exception to that, is there are carrots that I planted in the fall that are still in this bucket. The uh, lufa squash is there. And then everything else there is potatoes and that one, to, that one pineapple that's hidden in the back there as well. Now, the peas are really starting to struggle. It's getting too hot for them. Um, I've got a couple of peas here that I can harvest. Honestly, I've only pulled off maybe half a dozen peas and I ate them all fresh. Ugh. Got a couple small ones there still. Now my trellises have worked really well. Um, I've been really happy with those. The zucchini completely died out. I think that they probably drowned. That pot didn't have good uh, drainage and I'm pretty sure they just drown in it um, so no zucchini this year now I know it's a jungle back here this is the delicata squash and I planted this on the recommendation of my daughter Caitlin she said this is an amazing squash it's her favorite and you know what it's been blossoming like crazy and every once in a while I see what I think is a squash, and then nothing. I never find a squash. And I don't see any now. I don't see any squash at all. So zucchini um, have male and female flowers, and it's very possible that we don't have both male and female flowers on this plant. Um, honestly, I haven't kind of checked the flowers. You can tell by the stamens inside and I have not checked. Um, you have to check that in the morning and because of my work schedule, I don't always see that. This one um, here, I think this is a male flower. Um, but I don't have another one open to look at. So that could be the problem. I'm not sure, I'm kind of disappointed that I have no squash going on here. So we'll see what happens with that. So I'm gonna hand hold the camera again just because it's such a jungle in here. Um, so these are, this is a younger small tomato plant. And that was a volunteer tomato that we just put into a pot. Um, I have some younger uh, paste tomatoes that are 
planted this spring. Um, of course, the three large tomatoes are the ones that made it through the frost. Those are the fall tomatoes that I planted. Um, you can just see that it's crazy up there. I do want to try to cover this this weekend or this week before we leave. We leave on Sunday for our family vacation. So this is the leaf green stock and you can see more rogue volunteer tomatoes that I've just let go. Um, I've got some flowers here, some uh, zinnias. These are nasturnums, and the colors of these flowers have just been gorgeous. Very excited with those. This is actually dill right here, and you can see another rogue tomato trying to grow. This is lettuce, and I recently cut it, so it looks a little rough right now. This is one of those mini tomato plants that my mother-in-law gave me. And I do have a couple of strawberries right here at the top. Um, our grandson Weston got to eat the first one that was ready. So that's already been harvested. And this looks like another flower right here um, that I planted as well. Now I have some celery back here. That's actually looking really good. This is the celery. And my basil is hiding back there in the corner. I really shouldn't let it go to flower. Oh, look, a bee. Thank you, bee, for coming over here. Um, I really shouldn't let the basil go to flower like that, but you know what? It's just pretty. I like it. So I don't mind that it went to seed. So now I'm on the outside of the container garden. We have a separate section here. And I'm not sure how many are here. Let's count them. There's more than a dozen pots of potatoes out here. We're using those grow bags and we have some regular pots and potatoes have gone wild this year. So I'm really hoping that we have a bumper crop of potatoes. Now I have something else I want to show you down here. Now right here, we've got some... Hun, are these blackberries or raspberry? Or... Hun? What? Are these blackberries or raspberries? Um, I believe they're blackberries. Okay. The property, the little starters that I found the bottom. Okay. So we've got two pots that we think are blackberries. We forget what they are. But there's either blackberries or raspberries right here. These were from starters that Philip got if they are the blackberries. So we've got some fruit right here. And um, of course, we've had lots of flowers too. So we're going to have a few little blackberries here to eat. Very exciting. Now I do have a fruit tree back here. I think that's a pear tree. I'm completely guessing on that. The label's long gone. So, but it's back here as well. So that's the side panel of this garden. You can see the side area right here. And uh, it's just doing great. You don't know how excited I was to see a bee over here. I've been kind of upset with those bees because they kind of are like, you remember the Jetsons? The Jetsons would shoot up and then they'd shoot out. And I feel like that's what the bees do. Um, in the bright sunlight, you can see them flying and they do. They shoot up and then they shoot out and they go right over my garden. And so I was glad to see there was one little lazy bee that just came over here to uh, visit my garden. So the last thing that I need to do this morning is do some fertilizing. We are leaving for Tennessee. So our uh, son, Philip's son, and his girlfriend are getting married this weekend. And we are taking a family trip and all going to Tennessee with our family and hers. And we're really looking forward to it. This is a real vacation, no work involved. So I'm really excited about that. So I wanna fertilize before we go. So I'm filling this bucket with water and then I'm going to add the fertilizer. Now I've been using the fish emulsion and you add it's two tablespoons per gallon of water. This is a two or I'm sorry, this is a five gallon bucket. I just pour it in.
measure it. I just pour it in. And then I stir it with a stick. Now we are expecting rain later today, um, but I do want to give all of this stuff some fertilizer before we go. Green stalks are really easy to fertilize. I'm just going to pour my fertilizer right in the top, and then I cover the I cover the distribution hole so that the fertilizer will mix into all the water before it releases down. And then once it's full, it's full, I let it go, and that way the fertilizer is completely mixed when it starts to go down. Now these are the pepper plants. I've harvested one pepper and I think there's one more. Just one, just one second. Actually, I don't see it. I don't see one. I don't know what happened to it. There was another one on there. You wanna check and see if there's a pepper on there? Do you see a pepper? No, I don't see one either. This is Weston, our grandson. Oh, this is my No pepper. No, I see the pepper. Yeah, well, we'll have to grow another one. More tomatoes. More tomatoes, I know, be careful. They're not ready to pick yet. How many tomatoes do you see? Yeah? Not yet. They're not ready. Uh-oh. Well, friends, I hope you have enjoyed this garden tour of our May container garden. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed to our channel. We really appreciate you helping our channel grow. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.